Hi Al, welcome back to Frames and Ford's YouTube channel. Um, in this short film, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tour of the forge and then you can see all the power hammers and the machinery that we do. But what you've got to remember is you don't need a load of power hammers to forge. It's just your hand, eye coordination. So you can work with a normal hammer and just a small anvil. We have loads of power hammers because we use them on our courses and I do a lot of industrial forging and big sculpture work. So I'm going to go through the workshop and then we'll explain each hammer and then show you in detail. A lot of people have asked me to put some bits up in the workshop and then afterwards in the, in the next film that we do then as I've got some sculpture commissions I'll film it and then each hammer that we work on and each hydraulic press I'll explain to you how the hammer made works and when it was made and a bit of history about the machine so it helps you guys in your own workshops. Oh yeah, yeah, this is one of the first hammers in the workshop. It's uh, a Burns Dorfer 1958, and we've had this here about six or seven years now. It's about one and a half hundred weight, 70 kilos, so it's just under one and a half hundred weight. Uh, it's a lovely hammer. I'll start it up and I'll, you can see it running. <laughs> they only use the air once so they're quite noisy so we've exhausted it up out through the roof and um, Pilkington does the same thing in all days and onions hammers so some of the power hammers are different over the years we've had quite a few power hammers and I've saved them from the scrapyard we repair them do them up use them then we pass them on to other students that are then wanting to set up in a trade so it keeps them away from being smashed up because too many hammers and old blacksmith equipment is smashed up because people say it's old and ancient and you can't use it where these are these are lovely hammers Amyangs are almost a copy of these. The small hammers you'll see come from China. So it's a non-licensed hammer. They're made in Russia. This one's made in Germany. This is, is a design that most people can use. They are a nice hammer. We use it quite a lot. Now when I teach, I'm going around showing you all these power hammers. So you can see when I teach on the courses, these are some of the toys you can play with. All the machines are named after the knights at the round table, where this one's called Galahad. The reason we've done that, so we can do uh, repair sheet on a service sheet and also all our fuses on the fuse box have the name of the power hammer on because a few years ago we nearly had a bad accident where I wired in a massive 500 weight hammer and turned my box off and then locked it out and somebody actually turned it on by mistake and if I hadn't have checked it I'd have been touching the live wire because we had numbered machinery so with a name on your equipment and a name on the fuse box then you're safe you know the thing so all right this is the second hammer in the doorway of our workshop. This is Lancelot. This is a 200 weight Massey clear space. I think it's about 1953. We use this one. Massey's are a really lovely hammer. They recycle the air and I'll just move it from one cylinder to the other. So they run fairly quiet. I'll start it up and I'll show you. You can have a listen to it running. Oh yeah, this is another type of hammer. This is a 400 weight Massey drop hammer. There's a pair of these here that we're commissioning and putting in. They come from Taylor's Eyewitness, oldest knife makers in Sheffield, and they were forging blades in them in one inch. So we've got some dies made, and we're going to do power hammer belt buckles and a few little knives. So when they're in and working, you'll be able to use them on a course and forge yourself to you see how the dies work. They're a nice hammer. They're about, I think, 60 years old. One is older than the other. One's about 1940, I think. One's probably 50s. Might be a little bit older. There's a lot of concrete underneath from stopping looking into the ground. 
Um, we haven't bolted them down yet because I'm still positioning them and then I'm going to put the tops on. But nice hammer, very small for a drop hammer. These are just really tall in hammers that done tiny little spanners and bits and pieces on them. You do reasonable things, but these go up to like one ton drop on them, really massive. Right. Well, there's another spring hammer. This is quite an old one. It's a Massey and it's a one piece spring hammer. It's 100 weight and it's 19, about 1908. Really fast hitting hammer. We'll use that, you'll see this working when we do a sculpture and we do a video of it in a few weeks of some poppies and we'll forge the leaves out and it's really fast hitting. Handy little hammer, you know, nice, easy to run, quiet. But there's another one over here, I'll show you a different one. Right, this is another one, it's a bit of a wacky hammer, this one. It's another type of spring hammer. Patterson used to do one like this, but this one is Hasley and Davison Limited Sheffield, and it's a spring hammer that the knife makers use, and it's a big hole right through the middle. I like this hammer, it's about half hundred weight, but it's nice to control. I'll turn it on and I'll show you how easy it is to control it. Oh, I have to plug it in. It helps when you plug them in, but I really like this. It's quite easy to control it, look. quite a lot for drawing out tong runs. It's really fast for tong runs. But it's a big hole right through the middle. So if you do a fuller in a sword blade, you can feed it right through the hammer and go right through and out the back of the machine. It gets a bit wobbly and a bit airy, but it's a nice, nice hammer. Well, this hammer's Arthur. It's a 500 weight massive clear space. What I'll do in a minute, I'll start this up and then I'll demonstrate on you how powerful they are. Now, you have a lockdown position on these hammers, which are really good. So you can have a hold down. So you have a full work position when the hammer will be floating up and down when you can use it. And then you can have a lockdown position so when you want to twist the bar, you can actually lock them into the machine. I'll show you that. And then they have a one hit. So you can, you can drop forwards on them, but they bounce. But I'll show you what the one hit mode is like as well. I've actually got something that I'll put in there and I'll show you how powerful they are. But I'll lock a bar in there. So if I start it up, it's going to get noisy, but I'll show you how they hold down. Is. It's got a big old press, it weighs about eight and a half ton. It's about 250 ton push. Now most of our work is hot work only. Only rarely do I form any cold steel. It's very dangerous on a press, it generates a lot of pressure. If it's not in the press properly, it can fly out and hit you. Hot work, it will absorb all the energy. It's a handy machine, it didn't make a lot of stuff on this. In the background, I'll show you in the background over here. Now this is a knife cutting press. It's one of the oldest presses I had in Sheffield for cutting blades. It's probably about 1890s. It's great. 
Four on the pedal, donk, and cut your knife steel into your planks when you're making knives. Really easy, lovely straight cut. This is what I'm leaning on. Look, this is a bit of the samphire that we done a prototype on when we were just trying out the machinery. There's loads more equipment around here. I'm not going to show you around everything, you'll get bored. In later videos, you'll see us working the equipment in each machine. I'll show you how it works and you can see. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching our channel. Um, I'll be back again soon. It's a little good boy to you all. But just before I go, I'll explain to you if it's in the picture, you'll see this big peg. Now, what we've done, we had a young Australian blacksmith working with us called Will McGuire, who's doing really well now in Australia. And between us all, we got together with him and we made this peg because somebody put a load of stuff on their website of how great they were, how many machines that they have. We don't want to come across like that. I said to the young lads here, you only need a small amount of equipment and just your interest in it. So we made this big peg and we put it in the show where the people were. We said, if you think this is big, you should see the damn washing line. So that's how it's come about. So it's just done for a bit of fun with a load of students. All right, thank you.